Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we will create this beautiful page, not scrollable, but only like a visualization. And we will be using a different taste of 3GS that makes things easier and a little bit faster to produce when you need something simple like this, where you can rotate around the model and then integrate in a very simple page with a few clicks. Let's get started. Let's use Model Viewer from Google. This is a great project and you can integrate 3D models in a very simple way, just using their editor to configure everything that you need. And then you can basically copy and paste everything in every setting in a new design, and then you are ready to go. So let's jump into the editor. And then in the editor, you you are always like asked to drag and drop your file here. And I will just drop mine. By the way, the 3D model that I will be using, it is this one from Unleash Realm. I hope I pronounced it right. It is free on Sketchfab for attribution. So we will be using this model here. All that I did was to download this model in the GLB format. Once you drop the file, you can start customizing it to your needs. So I will choose the camera position that I want for my file to start in the camera position. And of course, you can go here and say, save the current as initial. And as you can see here in this code, every time that you update something, properties will change here. So for example, I will change the exposure a little bit and also I will change the shadow intensity to be a little bit like different. And you can change a lot of parameters here uh, and you can play with them. For example, the, the environment map, you can choose another one if you like. I will stick with the default one uh, because I like it. And then uh, once you have everything like you can also create for example the hotspots so let's say i want here to say fire power and i can add another one here saying engine and here for example smooth ride Whatever you want, uh, you can choose all of those hotspots. And as you can see, they work as expected. And then later you can attach some kind of behavior to those guys. And all of those hotspots are here in the code snippet. And basically, once you, you create this, you are ready to go. You can enable auto rotate, for example. This is another parameter that will make this model rotates and basically that's it let's jump into the code this is a very simple page that i created just to show you how easy it is to use the model viewer so this page only has like a a header a text a text in the background a background color and a footer with the model credits and that's it it is that simple and of course we have all of the this tiling for this page all that we have to do is to place according to the documentation our model viewer inside this html file so let's do it the first thing that i will do is to place the scripts that i will need for our project and i'm just using auto formatting here for from the glitch.com that's why it it gets automatically formatted and this is a very simple script grabbing the new version or the ultimate version from the model viewer. By the way, this comes from the documentation they have on their page, which is here. This is how we use it. So you just import the component and then you grab the model viewer with all of the parameters we set on that small window I was showing you in the editor.
because I already have all of the parameters, I will just copy and paste to make it faster. Now that we have the script in place, we can start copy and pasting all of the code from the editor. So remember, all of this code here, we need to copy and paste. Uh, so if we just do that, it will work by default. So let's do it. I will copy everything that we have here into our file. In our case, we need to change the path. So the way this website works, we need to upload into the assets folder. And I just did that. This is the 3D model that I was using on that editor. I will copy the URL, this one from the your CDN. And then we come here and then we can ch just change the source to something else. And it works, as you can see, it is there. It is that simple. But of course, I want to make it a little bit fancier. So I will copy and paste some additional parameters. So here we have it. It is basically the same structure, but I'm setting a bunch of different parameters here that I edited and I think it look better. You can check the documentation from to set your parameters the way you would like. Uh, those are mine and they change a bunch of things in the way the scene looks, the way the colors look like, of course, the default camera position. So I'm setting all of the parameters from the model viewer based on their documentation. If you want to check, you can visit their website and then click here on the API reference and you have a bunch of examples a lot of ways you can change, like for example, the camera auto rotate, and they have examples on how you can change. By the way, the examples are great because you have a lot of ideas. For example, how to manipulate lights, how to use, for example, grounded skybox. They have mostly all the things we have on 3GS, but in a simpler way to use because it is parameter based. Of course, here we are missing those hotspots that we had before. So the way it works, you need to use the, the hotspots from the editor inside the model viewer container. So I would just paste the code here so you can see how it looks like in the final version. Here we have the entire model viewer structure from the editor that I added some additional parameters to animate the camera using the data target and the data orbit parameter here. And all of those names comes from the editor, all the, all the structure. So all of the hotspots buttons need to be inside the model viewer container. And then we have them here. But of course, they are doing nothing because we need to add additional scripts to make something when we click on them. You can trigger yourself like anything. I'm triggering this function, which I created to animate the camera, but you can do whatever you want. But before adding the interaction for those hotspots, uh, one thing that is incredible, it is in the most recent versions from the model viewer, you can actually use post-processing. So let's add that. The first thing we need is to add some additional scripts in the header. Now that we have the first part of the scripts in place, let's place the second part, which is in the end of the document together with this one here. This is the second part of the script. Uh, you are basically loading the model effects from model viewer effects. Now in the last part, all that we have to do is inside the model viewer container, like this entire piece is one single thing. Inside here, we need to create the effect composer. I already have mine. You can of course set up your with your effects. And so I'm using the ambient occlusion, the color grade, and the bloom effect. 
and you can immediately see the difference on the right so let me remove this comment and then you will see that it's no glowing no lights it's a little bit boring and with the post-processing it looks much better you have the bloom effects it merges better with the scene and it looks great by the way you can check the documentation and all of the implementation on the model viewer website in their home page they don't only have the documentation for the api but they also have the documentation for the model viewer effects that i was showing you you can follow the examples and then you will see everything that i just showed you what you need to load then the import map then adding the model viewer effects and then this is the way you start using the effect composer again pretty simple to use very straightforward the last interaction that i created here was the annotation clicked which is a function that i defined here in the end of the file and I'm using this script that I grabbed from Twitter. The credits are here in case you want to check out the source code. Uh, and what it's basically doing is grabbing the model viewer, then finding any annotation with the annotation clicked function. We are passing the, the actual element that was being clicked. And inside that, we will search for the dataset parameters then we set those two guys and this script here will read this information to make the camera animate towards the positions that we defined here. So the magic happens in the data set parameter. So basically when we click on this hotspot, powerful engine, we are telling this script here, camera control model.js that we want to move the camera to this data orbit position and this data target position with this data fob field of view. And that's it. That's why when you click, we have a different camera animation on each one of those annotations. But yeah, the idea is just to show you how simple it is to create a, a viewer uh, and place your 3D model on a page. Of course, this is responsive not my design because i was making it faster but you can expand this you can make this scrollable they have a great example on the documentation how you can interact with the scroll and i suggest you to take a chance and and try because it is really great so you go into the examples staging and camera and then orbit and scroll and as you can see here as we scroll the page, that guy is moving. And the way they are doing this is just by setting those parameters, basically moving the camera, calculating the window scroll Y, and, it, and that's it, it's that simple. So again, this can be used in many different ways. I created a bunch of projects using Model Viewer uh, from Google. It is a great product and a great project to follow because they are always improving. So with this, we finished this very simple tutorial. It, it, it was meant to be really easy to do. And again, the idea is to use this kind of page to showcase models, create uh, things around and creating basic interactions. Of course, if you need more advanced stuff, you need to use 3GS, like the full version, but this one can be faster to produce and can give you great results. I hope you like it, this very simple tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if you like this kind of faster tutorial because I can create more of them in the future. Using other techniques, try to compress the usage of these kind of libraries in a simpler way. Thank you very much and see you. Bye bye.